Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only Stegosaurus. We're going to talk about Stegosauridae or the Stegosaurid family. We should probably start with, you know, the mo. Did you just get strangled by a mongoose? What are you doing, Max? Um, anyway, this is Stegosaurus. We got the place, we got the spice. We're going to get all into that soon. This is one image if you want a little bit of a size context next to a human being. If I can find the picture, I can't. Oh, well. Well, you guys have seen a stegosaurus before. I'd love to see. I'm excited to see these pictures of stegosaurus. Have, has anyone started, Megan, have you started to draw yours yet? Oh, here we go. I have not, but I yeah. do have um, a fanny pack with several uh, bad jokes just written on post-its, and we won't know what to expect if I pull one out. Okay. Uh, just give me one sec. I'm writing into the chat. I got it. I got it. Oh, you got it. Yeah, Grace, I thought that's your job. Zoom. <laughs> All right, this is it, stegosaurus. We are talking about the Stegosaurids today, big spiky platy boys. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I should also mention, per usual, we are going to try to execute our bingo game. So I would love it if, if and when one of you gets bingo. I'm going to share the screen right here. So if you want to take a screenshot so you have it, this is it. Well, if and when one of you gets bingo, please shout out to one of our co-hosts, Grace or Megan, uh, and let me know. And you're going to win a really cool prize, which might be a high five. It might be more than that. We'll see what we can do. All right, that's the bingo card. Take your screenshot. Megan, we talked about Dino the day. I showed the bingo card. What, what, is our, what do we do? How do we get this thing started off? Do you remember? What's the next thing? I think I get to select the next Dino or not a Dino participant. That is absolutely correct. So every day, right off the bat, we play Dino or not a Dino. And the previous day's winner gets to choose the competitor for today. We're about to play Dino or not a Dino. Megan, who amongst us? Our esteemed colleagues has earned the right to play Dino or not a Dino. Uh, so this person requested it from me yesterday, and oh. I think that he is going to probably be a strong contender to get the highest score we've seen. Wow. Uh, and it is Michael Partham. Michael Partham. All right, let me find Michael so I can bring him up here. Da, 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 da. There it is. Because he's always coming in hot with, like, all the facts and everything. So. Heck yeah. Michael is 30 years experience of watching doc documentaries nonstop. <laughs> so it's all up here. <laughs> Excellent. And you always have a different iteration of like a Jurassic Park shirt. Where are you getting all of these? Uh, there's a local Buffalo uh, charity slash t-shirt company that's an offshoot of the Buffalo Bills and whatnot, but they make like little parodies of stuff. Orchard Park is where the Buffalo Bills play. It's like south of Buffalo. Okay. And they got like two different versions of it too. Cool. Cool. Nice. All right. Michael, are you ready? I was born ready. Let's you were born it. ready. All right, just to remind our friends at home, the way this game works is I have the name of 10 different animals. Some are actual dinosaur names, others are not. Some I've just totally made up. And your job is simply to tell us if it is a dinosaur or not a dinosaur. All you have to do is get six out of the 10 correct. All we're shooting for is a D minus here, very low stakes. Uh, let me bring your screen back up if I can find it. There it is. All right, Michael, here we go. Number one, I'm gonna keep score with my pad and pencil here. Number one, and again, if you need help in the chat box, you guys, you can send any of our esteemed co-hosts uh, a hint mm -hmm. or give a thumbs up or shaking your head and Michael might check you out as a, a phone a friend. All right, here we go. Number one, mm -hmm. Chunkingosaurus. Chunkingosaurus. Ooh. It does sound like a clump together one, but... Being an educated person, I do my homework. I know that is a stegosaur. That is a dinosaur. Chunkingosaurus. Megan, do you want to, what, Megan, what's the deal? Is that one or not? That one is one. That is a dinosaur. I did not know that was a dinosaur until Megan told me yesterday. So Chunkingosaurus, yes, one of one. Excellent. Great start. Number two, Bambi Raptor. Hmm. Bambi Raptor. That, that does sound familiar. I will say it's a dinosaur. And you will be correct in that. Two out of two, Bambi Raptor. All right. Number three, Sauropelta. Sauropelta. Pelta. I can spell these if you'd like. That helps. <laughs> Use them in the form of a sentence or whatever. Yes. What is the country of origin? <laughs> <laughs> right. Or the time. Uh, hmm. I'll say that's a dinosaur. Wow, Michael, three of three. Sauropelta is a heavily armored dinosaur. Sauropelta. All right, number four. 
Carcharodontosaurus. Oh, come on. Carcharodontosaurus. Challenge. That is the dinosaur that was discovered around the same time as Giganotosaurus. It was discovered in the Sahara Desert. It's another one of the contenders to the throne of Tyrannosaurus Rex or whatever. That is definitely a dinosaur. That is absolutely, I love the extra info you know there. Heck yeah, that is absolutely a dinosaur. All right, you are four for four. No one I don't think has ever started this well. Number five, Bunyip. Bunyip. He's like, no, absolutely not. No, Bunyip <laughs> is not a dinosaur. Uh, in fact, that is a, a swamp creature from uh, Australian Aboriginal myths. And if you, if you, I learned this yesterday, look up Bunyip, B-U-N-Y-I-P, because it is crazy looking. Bunyip, not a dinosaur. You are five for five at this point. Wow, I'm gonna have to try make, make these a little bit harder next time. All right, Michael, number six, Fouchinator. Fouchinator. Hmm. I'm looking at some screens here. I'm getting some no's. Jada says no. Grace is very I'll, unsure. I'll go with the phone of friends and say not a dinosaur. No. Fouchinator is a combination of Anthony Fauci and a nader. So no. <laughs> Fouchinator <laughs> is not a dinosaur. Familiar. <laughs> you you a nader is, those anaders are getting a lot more common these days. So I didn't quite, I wasn't quite sure. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All right. Uh, number seven, Zuni Ceratops. That is a primitive form of Triceratops. I think it was maybe early Cretaceous. Didn't have a nose horn, but had two brow horns. Why are you not teaching this class, Michael? Uh, you're correct. I know. <laughs> I can be a that is absolutely I'm correct. I'm my application right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're seven of seven. This is very impressive. I might make up some to make them harder, but here we go. Next one, Alberta Ceratops. Ugh, you combined Albertosaurus with the Triceratops. That's not a dinosaur. I didn't. Someone did when they named that very real dinosaur Alberta ah, Ceratops. you got me. Uh, all you right. Got me. You, you can't get them all right. That would just be, it'd be like. I got them all that. I got them all yesterday. I will allege that. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that one is not your first incorrect Alberta Ceratops. It is a relative uh, of Triceratops. Found where, Michael? Where do you think it could have been found? Oh, mm. <laughs> British Columbia. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> All right, next. Uh, this one's tough. Mm. A duck. That's a dinosaur. Th that is a dinosaur. Ducks Which are I reminded me the other day when I point out how duck bill dinosaur is actually very repetitive, as is ostrich dinosaur, which we have yep. Definitely, definitely. All right, so you are now, I, you've gotten seven out of eight. We've got two more. Uh, next one is... Fusilagipus. Fusilagipus. That doesn't sound like a dinosaur. No, it, it doesn't. I made that up. That is not, that is not a dinosaur. I like the word fuselage, add a puss. Here we go. All right. Last but not least, this one is very hard. Mm. I did some extreme vetting to see if I should even include this. Are you ready? Go ahead. Get a nine out of 10, which is an A, which is the greatest grade anyone's ever gotten. Mm. Bitey McBiterson. I, do I need to spell that? Should I spell it out for everyone? Bitey McBiterson. What, what do you think, Michael? Is that, is unless, <laughs> a, unless a scientist was drunk one day when he was writing his report, that can't not be a dinosaur. That is, that is not a dinosaur, but if I ever found one, I'd be very, uh, I'd be tempted. I'd be tempted. Bitey McBiterson. Michael, you crushed the game. Nine out of 10. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. Michael. Megan, you chose wisely. So, Michael, tomorrow we're going to come to you. You get to choose who is going to play, and probably not dethrone you. It's going to take some real chops to beat 9 out of 10. Congratulations. Everyone, let's air high five. The table. So close. Air five to Michael, crushing the game. Megan, excellent choice as my esteemed co-host today. Can we see your shirt? Can you hold that up a little? Oh, yeah, it's got a, everyone's favorite dinosaur on it. Mm -hmm. Tacos. Tacosaurus. Tacosaurus. It's interesting that it's not like sea tacosaurus. That's a whole other Listen. It's from the like dinosaur version of Rainforest Cafe. I don't think they're uh, out there for the science. Fair, fair. All right, let's get into it. What a week. That's from a different podcast that is just stuck in my brain. Anyway, you guys, today we're talking about the stegosaurids or the stegosaurs. Uh, obviously, stegosaurus is the most famous of that group. So these things, stegosaur, uh, it translates to roof lizard. Dinosaurs are lizards. Roof refers to its crazy plates and spikes on the back of its back. Um, 
they actually didn't live for that long of an amount of time. They were somewhat earlier dinosaurs. We're talking about 165 to 125 million years ago. So a relatively small amount of time with respect to like the amount of time dinosaurs were alive. By the way, dinos are about 230 to about 66 million years ago. So these guys are right in the middle of like dinosaur time. No, they were all quadrupedal walking on four legs, all herbivorous, all had some level of plates and spikes. And some people call the plates on the back scutes, S-C-U-T-E-S. Sometimes they're pronounced like slightly differently. I like scoots though. Scoots, it's fun. Um, they had some of the stegosaurs had some of the smallest brain to body ratios of any animal that has ever existed. Like very, very tiny brains for the size of their body. And in fact, for a long period of time, they believe for a lot of stegosaurs, including stegosaurus, they had an extra brain or like an expanded neural column near their butts, basically like a butt brain, like a second brain that would help or second nervous system component that would help move and control the tail. Uh, we, know, we now know that is not true. Uh, in fact, some, a lot of animals, or not, I don't know if it's a lot or some, but I know there are certain animals alive today that have expanded uh, spinal cord near the base of the spine as well. So it's a similar type of thing, but it doesn't mean they have like an extra brain there. But you don't need to be that smart when you are covered in plates and armor for protection. All you're doing is walking around, munching on food, and you're walking around incredibly slowly. We talked yesterday, yesterday about the ornithomimosaurs, the almost inarguably the fastest group of dinosaurs who ever exist. Stegosaurs, totally the other end of the spectrum. We're talking somewhere in the two to five-ish miles per hour range, which is about what a human does when you're walking. So these guys aren't any faster than you just taking a normal stroll down the street. So pretty slow, but again, incredibly heavily armored. So we should probably talk exactly about that. Megan, Grace, feel free to interrupt uh, and chime in with any questions or comments as we go, but we're going to jump into the first of our three stegosaurs of the day. So this is a Kentrosaurus. Got it. Pretty Great. small. You, you got, you, you, okay, yeah. Size, pretty small compared to stegosaurus. This is the Kentrosaurus. This is what it looks like uh, with respect to the actual fossil. Again, you can see those crazy two foot long spines coming off of its scapula. This is what it looks like fleshed out, maybe. Again, speculative. Um, here's another interpretation of it's uh, fleshed out. I love that spine that comes out the side. But again, that one's a relatively small, as far as stegosaurs go, compared to this one right here. If anyone knows how to pronounce this, please let me know. I mess this up every time. Is it woo her ho woo -woo? I don't know. Wurhosaurus? Wuerosaurus? Not really sure. Anyway, it's obviously a little bit bigger. This one is slightly larger. Um, then the Kentrosaur, it's smaller than a Segosaurus though. This one lived about 130 million years ago. And it was one of the last known like surviving Stegosaurs. Again, they are only around about 165 to 125 million years ago. This is one of the last ones we saw. Um, this one is one of the most low to the ground as far as the Stegosaurs go. All Stegosaurs are pretty low to the ground, not just their body, but their face and their head as well, as you can see in like this depiction here. So I'll ask you guys, if you have an animal that is low to the ground, with its head very low to the ground, what could that tell us about the environment in which it lives and the type of food it survives upon? Any ideas? Rob's raising his hand. Anyone? And I'm gonna let Rob answer. Yeah, Rob, what's up? I don't have an answer to that question, but I know how to pronounce the name of that dinosaur that you didn't know how to pronounce. Tell me the pronunciation first, hit me. I don't know the answer to the second question, but the first, um, the name you now you pronounce it Wu Ho Asaurus. Wu Ho Asaurus. Wu Ho. Wu Ho. Okay. No, Wu Ho. Wu Ho. Wu Ho. Wu Ho. Wu Ho. Wu Ho. Wu Excellent. All right. So, well, Rob, I'm going to ask you because I got you here. If you're an animal whose body and its mouth is very low to the ground, what do you think it was eating? Plants. Plants. But just what? Where? What kind of plants? Well, it would mainly probably eat shrubs and bushes as much as it can. Shrubs or bushes or grasses, you're right. We know they were herbivores based on their teeth. Uh, stegosaurs had these really cool teeth that had, most of them had five ridges. It almost makes like this, uh, it almost looks like a seashell shape, the tooth itself. We know they were using them to, to clip and grind plants. And for instance, you're right, Rob, these guys are really close to the ground, so we think they're eating low-lying vegetation. Easy to determine they're herbivores based on their teeth. And then we have to kind of look at the way they would be able to move. 
uh, oh, we have a dog as well, to be able to figure out what they're eating or where that food was. So yeah, low-lying vegetation. All right, uh, Megan, Grace, do we have any thoughts, comments before we move on to our dino of the day? No, you guys are relatively quiet today. That's fine. I'll just keep yelling at the screen. Grace, there's something. We have a comment um, yeah. from Gerard who said, not grasses as we know them today. Grasses evolved only about 55 million years ago. Facts, facts. You're right. Thank you for fact checking me on that. I'm thinking grasses as far as like stuff on the ground, but you're right. Grasses as we think about grasses weren't around back then. A lot of the plants we have today weren't around back then. We weren't either. Good point. Thank you for calling me out on that. I get excited. I just start talking and sometimes you say things that technically are not true. So thank you. We're holding each other accountable. That's what scientists do. All right. It is time. Stegosaurus. Grace, it's on your shirt right there. Can you pop that up for everyone? There's a great stegosaur. Grace, you've seen the stegosaurus at the American Museum of Natural History in New York, correct? Yes, of course. Many, many times. Many, many a time. It is on the left as soon as you enter the Hall of Ornithischian Dinosaurs. We'll show you guys a couple more images of a stegosaurus. Grace, let me know if the screen share stops working. Oh, I forgot to show you other Werhoasauruses. That's one. This is one. Here's another iteration with crazy coloration. The reason why I like this one is because those plates are a different shape than we think of like, here's a stegosaurus plate, almost more of like a triangle pyramid where these are kind of a little more rectangular and flat and square. Just different variation, right, within a similar related species. And I love to see these different, the diversity within the stegosaur group. And it also reminds me of the fact that we know that the fossil record in of itself is incredibly incomplete. And then the things that we actually find, it's completely random and rare to find anything, right? So we don't know how many more stegosaurs are out there, different types of stegosaurs we have not found with different other kind of similar, but crazy shaped and colored patterns or um, plates and ornamentation. We're just not really sure. I think this one is a, it's a little exaggerated here. Uh, <laughs> this went a little bit, a little hype on the contrast, uh, but you know, why not? We can speculate. Wild fun. All right, stegosaurus time. Here we go. This is stegosaur. Pretty large. Pretty large compared to a person. Stegosaurus lived about 150 million years ago. Let me show you a couple other images I like. By the way, when I choose these images, I go on Google image search and I find ones that I think either illustrate a point or I think might be somewhat realistic or I just think are good looking paleo art, right? Some are not. This one I think looks pretty good. I could see this as a realistic coloration, maybe. This one is a little, little bit crazier, but hey, we can speculate. Is that the last one? No. All right. Now, what are the major features? What are the diagnostic features when we think about stegosaurus? When you guys hear or see stegosaurus, what are the first things that come to mind? Spiky boys. Spiky boys. We got the spikes on the tails. What else? I mean, you all are, you guys can say it, you know. We all know oh, you want to look at the, at the plates, obviously. We got the spiky boys, but we got the plates, right? And so if we're going to start with stegosaurus plates, here is, this is actually a fossil replica of one, the Museum of the Rockies uh, in Bozeman, Montana. That is a really cool museum. They have the largest collection of tyrannosaur skulls uh, anywhere. So if you're ever in Montana, that's this place to check out. So if you guys look at this, um, this plate carefully, you can see there's these like ridges and grooves running up and down it, right? Other than Rob, who I'm sure, <laughs> other than Rob and Mike, who I'm sure know what those are, does anyone know what those are evidence of? What the plates are? Not just the plates, but I'm asking specifically these ridges and grooves running up and down the plate. I think um, Ashley, Ashley has an answer. Do we want to let her take a stab? Please, yeah. Ashley, you're on. Um, well, I think that we think there might have been blood vessels running up through there. Um, that part I know. I wonder, though, does, do the tendons attaching, like ligaments and tendons, have anything to do with it, too? Great question uh, and great point. So you're correct, first of all, in that those are evidence of blood vessels. So these plates, and by the way, most stegosaurs had around 20. So stegosaurus, it varied based on individual. Most of them had around 20 of these plates. They're covered in a keratinous sheath. So keratin is the same stuff that makes up nails and your, your fingernails and hair. And so you have this thin covering over the bony plate. Now you mentioned like ligaments. 
So these plates are scutes, and that's a type of osteoderm. Osteo is bone, derm is skin. So osteoderms are bones that are embedded in the skin. They're not, so these actually, these plates you see in Stegosaurus aren't actually attached or fused to the spine. They're simply embedded in the skin. And so Grace brought this up earlier about there's potential, hi Grace, uh, there's potential that they weren't always like perfectly upright and perpendicular. They may have been able to move slightly. We think at this point they wouldn't like lie completely flat, but to be able to be, uh, the ability to move them a little bit may have been, may have been possible. Now, there's a lot of theories as to why they had them. And we talk about this every single day, weird features on dinosaurs, usually fighting or flirting or fanning fighting, flirting, or fanning. And what I mean by fanning is thermoregulation. So if you have these plates that are sticking up, they're crisscrossed with channels of blood vessels very near the skin, it's quite possible that they use these to help thermoregulate, moderate, and maintain a certain body temperature. But also, because they're very close to the skin and filled with blood vessels, it's possible these plates, much like many of these depictions we see, like this one, were actually able to blush more red at certain times, and so their color could have actually changed and that could have been done either to kind of puff up and make itself look bigger and brighter and scarier to try to scare away predators or as a signaling device to signal I'm one of yours as far as uh, communicating with others of the same species or trying to win a mate from that same species. Again, just like a peacock has a beautiful tail to try to win lady peacocks, maybe male stegosaurs. And there is a fair amount of evidence suggesting stegosaurs were somewhat sexually dimorphic with those plates being different for males and females. So they could have been used for that as well. Blowing or flipping up, blushing more red, try to win over a date. Not sure, but again, just like many features on dinosaurs, fighting or flirting, this one add fanning in there as well. I've got a question. Uh, yeah. What is the ratio between plates and vertebrae? And is there a relationship between the two? What is the, well, I don't know exactly how many vertebrae they have. Uh, again, they had about 20 plates depending on the individual. So I'm not sure the exact ratio, but I don't, they're not fused to the spine either. So I don't think there's like an exact correlation between like vertebrae plate, vertebrae plate. Not, I'm not sure. That's a good question though. I have two things here. Uh, first of all, uh, earlier, uh, we had another clarification on the pronunciation. Uh, Tyrannosaurus says it's Wu Erho. -er because it's Chinese. So, so, uh, well, I'm so not, it's some pronunciation. I'm not alone in not knowing how to say this, is what you're telling me. Okay. Uh, um, and Danelle wants to know if it would have kind of been sim similar to the way an elephant uh, thermoregulates with their ears. That Yeah, that's another one of the theories. Exactly. Yeah, you have this bigger feature that has blood vessels very close to the skin, uh, allowing wind and air to hit it. Yeah. I actually literally read that last night. Someone compared it to the ear of an elephant. Yeah. Great. Great comment. All right, so plates, obviously iconic, but there's another part of this, bot, this big boy, this spiky boy, that is absolutely iconic. Uh, let's, go, let's go to the images. Ba -ba -da -ba. These, ladies and gentlemen, are two to three foot, almost a meter long tail spikes, AKA thagomizers. And if you wanna know what the heck that is or why they're called thagomizers, well, I think it was in the 80s, there was a, a cartoon by a man named Gary Larson. So I used to have the desktop far side, like daily calendar. Love the far side cartoon. Look that up if you don't know the far side. And he made, he made some jokey cartoon about how a particular caveman named Thag met his demise by one of these Thagomizers. And now it's not like the scientific name, but you'll see it referred to in scientific papers and by actual paleontologists. Uh, and so it's slowly moving from like kind of a jokey nickname to like, no, everyone just calls it a thagomizer. So here is the original cartoon. Just very good. This is a good, uh, it's a good primer on Gary Larson. There's another one where it's people driving in a road and there's a sign that just says boneless chicken farm. And there's a bunch of like, just like chicken like gooey bodies lying around, that type of thing. Check out Gary Larson if you've not. So that's a thagomizer. All right, so thagomizers are cool, right? They're spiky, clearly used for defense. Um, and that's fine because they absolutely needed it. Remember, they didn't move fast. They had a tiny brain. They weren't very smart. But you don't need that when you have a nearly three foot long, well, a set of nearly three foot long tail spikes to be swung 180 degrees to protect yourself. And we absolutely know that's exactly how it was used, at least part of the time, 
Well, thanks to one very unlucky Allosaurus. So here is, here is an image. This is at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, another great dinosaur museum. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, Stegosaurus is the official dinosaur of the state of Colorado. True story. So this is an image uh, that shows a couple things. First of all, we haven't really talked about it yet, but they also had these little bony, almost like pebble-like features on the underside of its a neck, like its throat, you can see right there. So this thing is like very, very well protected all over its entire body. And this depiction right here of an Allosaurus attempting to eat either the mom or the baby here is based off of fossil evidence. So here's a, here's like a stylized version of what this may have looked like. But this is based off of fossil evidence of an Allosaurus pelvis that we have found. And we know that that Allosaurus, that particular Allosaurus died, excuse me, I'm burping. Okay, there we go. <laughs> died of a puncture wound that got infected when a Stegosaurus tail spike impaled its crotch. So this is like a 150 year old groin shot that killed it. And we know, here's a, here's a, a less stylized interpretation right here. And we know this killed it because there was a giant puncture wound that got infected and we can see pathologies in bone. We can see infection, uh, evidence of infection in bone. And we can tell if that bone began to heal or regrew. And this one did not. So it's pretty good evidence that it was this groin shot from a stegosaur that killed this allosaurus. And I cannot think of a worse way to go than a groin shot from a two foot long tail spike. So again, not the smartest, not the fastest, but absolutely one of the most well-protected pieces of megafauna ever. Grace, Megan, thoughts, comments, questions at this point. Uh, also, oh, I do have Ashley. Oh, hey, Megan. Ashley, just real quick. Ashley, is this making you like Stegosaurus more or less right now? I love Stegosaurus. I'm, I a, huge you steg, I'm a huge Steg fan. I'm working on a very special Stegosaurus illustration. Good. We're going to come. Thank you for reminding me. We're going to come to those in a second. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm into it. I did not know, by the way, about that pebbly neck business. Yes, I'm not, I, I need to do more research too. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to, that's my job today. I'm going to look that up. Because I remember the one at am &H, he doesn't have his pebbly right. neck business. Right, okay. some do, some don't. Well, you think about T-Rex, most T-Rexes in museums don't have the- um, Australia. Australia, like the under yeah. underbelly ribs. But now they're starting to add those back on. You know what, Dustin, that makes me think of? We're always learning new things in science. We are. That's the whole point of yep. science. There's always more to discover. Yep. That is the enigma and the paradox of knowledge. Absolutely. All right. Ash, spoken like a true teacher. Ashley's a teacher. Are you you're fourth grade, right? Fourth grade? Fourth grade. I'm on my lunch break right now. Fourth grade lunch break. Ashley is one of the best teachers I've ever seen practice the craft. That's not hubris. All right. Thank you. So Megan and I have got some questions from our um, Zoom people. Um, Natty wants to know, do we have any way of knowing or do we, do we think like how many colors were their plates and like did they change? How, what colors were the plates and did the plates change colors? Yeah. So we're not sure exactly the color of this dinosaur, right? But because those plates were crisscrossed with those channels of blood vessels, right under that keratinous sheath, again, the same stuff that makes up your fingernails, it stands to reason that at least when they blush them, or maybe most of the time, they had somewhat of a red hue to them. They were suddenly more reddish. But that doesn't tell us anything about the color of the rest of its body. And again, that is somewhat speculative with respect to the plates themselves. So my best answer is probably the plates were somewhat reddish, some, maybe sometimes more red than others. Uh, but that's, that's as confident we, as we can be about it. Um, and Richard wants to know, even though they were slow as far as movement, were they able to pivot and turn quickly when defending themselves? There's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of talk about how they would have defended themselves and almost everyone agrees that they're basically going to face away. So like if their attackers back here, they're going to like go like this and then just swing their tail at them. So, and that tail again could move 180 degrees sweeping the entire backside. Um, does that answer your question? Sure. Um, I have a participant who has a couple questions that, but would rather not be called out. Um, but uh, if there's a specific way to like, I guess with some of the ones that are more similar to one another, is there a, a, a trick for identifying different species or is it just kind of trying to figure out over time, um, you know, whether they're related species or? 
So if you find, let's say you find a bone, right? Your first step is to try to, well, first of all, you, you generally will know the general age of it based on the age of the rock that you're digging in. So that gives you somewhat of a clue of the animals that we know they're around at that same time. So let's say you find a bone and then the next step is looking at animals that we, or dinosaurs or animals in general that we found from that age and time period that have similar shape or structure, right? And if it's almost identical in the shape uh, and the structure, it's probably another member of that species. If we don't have a lot of fossils from that area or that time period or anyone that looks quite like that, then you may have found a new species, but it's really hard to determine that until you find more pieces. And that's why, in fact, if you look up a lot of not very well-known dinosaurs on, for instance, Wikipedia, it will say like, oh, this is only known from a partial like hip bone. And so there's still debate as to whether this is one dinosaur or it should get a whole new name. We just don't quite know yet because again, the fossil record is incredibly incomplete and it's like you're piecing together a puzzle without any guide, any image as to what it's supposed to look like and most of the pieces are missing. So good luck. Uh, speaking of Wikipedia, uh, they also read on Wikipedia that Stegosaurus always held their tails high and wanted to know the reason for that. Probably defense, right? I mean, if, if you're going to be able to defend yourself, you got to hold that up in the air. Um, also, we know they didn't drag their tails and that, that goes for all dinosaurs because we would have seen some tail mark on the ground between the footprints. Like you think about like an alligator as it moves, sometimes the tail is on the ground. You actually see that line between where the feet are. Um, yeah, and so if you look at the structure and the mount in every stegosaur, that tail is kind of up in the air. Also because the back legs are way long, well way, we're definitely longer than the front legs, so the whole body. So if these are the front, if the front legs are here and the back legs are here, back legs are just longer. So the body is gonna kind of be like this. And so the tail is going to be definitely more in the air than that head, which is down, like we said earlier, near the ground, just plucking away at low-lying vegetation, but not grass because grass didn't exist yet. And then Jason wants to know in that fossil setup that you showed um, that there, you know, there's the juvenile there. Is there evidence that they um, took care of their young as they grew? Yeah, we have fossilized footprints from Stegosaurus um, that are different shape and size. So we know they're walking together with probably their own young. There's a lot of really, really cool stegosaurus, not only um, fossils, but actually footprints and trackways in Colorado, in and around Denver. Uh, Dino Ridge is a really cool spot just outside of Denver that has, well, it's like a ridge that has preserved a ton of different footprints from a ton of different animals, um, which is really cool because you get to literally see how they're walking millions of years ago and what at the time was like an exotic beachfront destination. Like this is along the, the coast of the Western Interior Seaway. Clearly now we're hundreds of miles from where any water is. Were there multiple groups of dinosaurs that did parental care or are we not quite? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, I mean, for a but lot, you don't, don't think know. it was, okay. Do we, so there, do we there, know there, that there were some that definitely didn't? Um, n that definitely did not. I. That's a good question, that definitely did not. We have, we can make pretty strong guesses as to ones that may have may not have done that and then couple that with the fact that we don't have evidence with respect to like footprints or let me back up for one sec there's a couple ways that you can make a strong guess or theory that they actually did hang out with and take care of their young one is you can see footprints of like a mom and a baby next to each other or you can pretty you can be pretty assured they are moving together in groups or herds if you find like a bone bed, a fossil bone bed, where you have multiple individuals all dying together in the same place and time. Clearly there is some sort of unit of them hanging out together. But if you don't have either of those, then it's, it's really hard to make hypotheses about that. And so we have to look at what we think the ways they behaved were and compare that to modern corollaries, animals that are alive today, and then make educated guesses. It's not, not really sure. I think we should take two more questions and then I want to see these. Actually, you know what? I'm going to start looking through. If you guys have your drawings ready, hold those up. I want to come click through and see some of these amazing, amazing stegosaurs as uh, Megan and Grace give me any last questions. Yeah, so I have a question from Anonymous um, and they wanted to know, um, let me just find it really quick. Megan, show me that stego. Um, they wanted to know if you know anything about dinosaur ghosts. 
Do I know anything about dinosaur ghosts? Interesting. Yeah. That's a really good question. So dinosaur yeah. ghosts. So um, how, where, how do we want to start talking about this? So first of all, I have a particular friend, which I feel like I know where this question is coming from. I don't um, know. They didn't, they didn't wish to share their name. So who right, knows? I'm, I'm not going to share their name. I, I respect their anonymity of the question. Uh, Jada, we need to get you a contract for like drawing Disney's next dinosaur cartoon. <laughs> it is so good. So good. I think you went a little crazy with the head there. It's like a third of its body. We know they had really tiny heads, but you know, again. Oh, Ashley, that is spectacular. Wait, we're gonna get to Ashley in a second. Okay. You see all these, okay. and we also I'm need so to. So Ashley, hold that up again. I'll come back to the ghost thing in a second. Wow, so that Ashley is has spectacular has come correct with a depiction of what appears to be stegosaurus with a back that represents that looks like the brooklyn bridge is, is that correct yeah is this the, this is the little known emily roblingosaurus right uh, i'm gonna unmute you ashley uh who's emily roebling um well she <laughs> is the woman credited with getting the brooklyn bridge built but this is a very rare specimen mm -hmm. yep. native only to um the east river bed so oh, okay. very few have been found very specific very 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 small ecological niche in which it lived i like that that is beautiful um let's see what else we got i'm gonna keep moving through denise wow i love the coloration we got the purple and the orange that mom looks looks like she's been in quarantine stuck with kids for a while look at the face on that <laughs> yeah right oh <laughs> so as we keep going through um speaking of ghosts oh these look great Oh, I like this. We get some red and green. We get some oranges. So, oh, Margo. Oh, I like that. I got the counter shading and the shadows looking good into it, into it. Wow, it looks like we have an entire art school on this screen right now. All different shapes, colors, sizes. I particularly like the one with the very round basketball shaped head. I like what you did there. That's real good. What else do we got? Uh, Richard, per usual. <sighs> Love it. Yep, yep. Richard, I'm going to want a name from that guy. Can you, uh, I'm going to unmute you. Does that, that dude have a name? Is there a name for him? Uh, Doctor Who. Doctor <laughs> Who. Perfect. All right. <laughs> All right. Other images of Stegos. We got Bella and Emmert. These look great as well. Justin. Oh, wow. Nice, Justin. I like the red. Looking good. Ryan and Courtney, we've got, the, oh wow, okay. All right, all right, I like that. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Ooh, I like the, the orange plates with the very minimal body. I'm into the minimalism, that's good. Cat, cat always comes correct. That one is very flat, I like the flat, I like the sunshine, it's a pretty day. Catherine, professional artist over here, great work. She's even got a toy to model it from into that. <laughs> Inez, ooh, I like the different color on the back next to the plates. Beautiful. I think you can make the uh, Thagomizers slightly bigger next time, but I love where you're at. Kate, oh, those are real good. This is the spikiest day we've ever had with respect to these drawings. Uh, Cecilia Ceratops, I like the background colors. We got a sun, we got a cloud. I like that it's looking backwards, looking out for danger, I'm into that. Quick shout out to my mom. Hi, mom. You're so far from the camera. It makes you look like uh, like a honey, I shrunk the mom situation is happening. It's okay. Uh, Julian. Julian also has a toy from which he worked. Looking good. Looking great. I don't know what's going on there. Someone looks like their face is Aurora Borealis, but I'm into it. Pravinodon. Oh, wow. I like that we can see the scoots on all this one. That one looks pretty great. Uh, who have we missed here? We got Yasmin. Natty looks great, as always. Let's yeah, see that. Nose looks awesome. real good for sure. I like the blue. I haven't seen a blue one ever. That's good. Maisie, hi. That's great. I love it. Uh, it looks like it was in a horrible accident that cut off all his feet, but that's okay. You know, we still got room for improvement. M, <laughs> we got M joining us with her great. M is here finally. Hello. Hello. Wait, hold on. We'll get to M. Bryn, Bryn, that looks great. Bryn, that's almost as cool as your shirt. Oh, I like the mouth is open. Either. Saying I'm hungry or maybe yelling at a predator to get away from it. Adela, this looks good as well. We got the brown. Ooh, I like this. Looking back. I like the looking back over the shoulder action. Ava, I like your stegosaur. That looks pretty good. Kate. Ooh, Kate, uh, I need to ask you, Kate, what is the name of that human that is next to your stegosaur? Can you tell me? Kate's not there anymore. She just propped this up. 
Oh, that's, wow. Oh. Uh, let's see. That's Ed. 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 Good name. Ed. It's a good stegosaur yeah. name. Yeah, that's Ed Stegosaurus. Okay, cool. Let's see. Uh, M, thank you for joining us. Can we see your stegosaur? She's back. Oh, it's a cute one. I like this, the very small lower legs compared to the big back legs. I'm going to have to ask you, M, what is the name of the little dude you have there for scale? Oh, boy. Uh, Joe Peacock, after the man I just had a meeting with. <laughs> you had a legit meeting with a man named Joe Peacock. Yeah, that was his real name. Okay, excellent. So, Grace, where's, where, I lost my Grace. Grace, where are you? I'm right here. So, Grace, we had a question about dinosaur ghosts. Yes, um, very uh, important question. As someone who works at the famed, incomparable American Museum of Natural History, I assume you've been there after the museum closes and it, it yes. empties out, right? Do you, have you seen any evidence of dinosaur ghosts stalking the halls on the fourth floor? Because I mean, so many of their carcasses are, act, well, their bones or fossils are actually up there. So I'm just curious to know, do you, do you have anything you'd like to report before I say my thoughts? So I will say that in my experience, ghosts are quite shy, um, and the ones okay. at AMH are quite um, nice, so they're not going to pop out and scare you. Um, okay. So I haven't seen them myself, but I would suspect that an institution that is 150 years old with, mm -hmm. with artifacts that are billions of years old, that mm -hmm. I guarantee you there are ghosts hanging around. I haven't been lucky enough to see them myself, but um, hopefully one day. Maybe. So it's a possibility. All right. I'm going to, I want to get they Rob should... input here just real quick. Rob, you have, you have a thought on dinosaur ghosts you'd like to share? Uh, I, um, one time I heard that one of my, um, I, I went on a tour with one, um, dinosaur guy and he was taking us through a tour and he got to, I think it was like, I think it was like the taco one. I okay. think he, we, he was showing fossils of those. And then he said something that he saw one in the middle of the night or something. And then he just saw one touching its own head. Interesting. Touching the bone head. Yeah. Okay. It's like, dunk, dunk, dunk. Well, we'll have to look into that. They should come to life like Sue in Night at the Museum. <laughs> All right. So it sounds like we need to do a little bit more research with respect to dinosaur ghosts. I personally did some research into ghosts in general recently. By that, I mean just a survey. Because I hang out with relatively like science-minded people. I know a lot of science communicators, educators in museums. And so I made the assumption that because ghosts are kind of this, well, most people consider them like not a scientific entity, I assumed that my friends would almost all be like, no, ghosts don't exist. So I polled people. I just asked all my friends, all my colleagues, and it was literally right at 50-50. Like, I, people believing in ghosts and people not believing in ghosts, which very much surprised me. I, I'm not going to tell you my stance on ghosts. Um, because I want to leave that a mystery, much like ghosts themselves. Um, we are coming. <laughs> what, M? What? You, know, you want to know? I want to know your hot ghost takes. My hot ghost takes? All right. Are you ready? I'm going to do it just for you because you had a phone with, call with Joe Peacock. My hot ghost take. Ghosts don't exist. Ghosts aren't real. I'm sorry. I, I personally... As a science-minded individual, there is no compelling evidence to suggest that ghosts, at least in the way that like in pop culture and in our minds, we perceive like what a ghost is, this like kind of ethereal, like floating cloud present situation. There's no evidence for me, at least not enough for me to be like, yes, this is a distinct possibility these exist. Also, like if some entity was gonna come back and like haunt us, is it gonna take the shape of like a weird vape cloud? I don't know, that's just weird to me. Anyway, all right, speaking of weird vape clouds, I don't vape, uh, but I do eat food and I do spend time putting this together. So if you want to support this <laughs> Dino 101 that we do every single day, you can hit me up on Venmo. It's Dustin hyphen Growick, G R O W I C K, or PayPal. My email address is D Growick, D G R O W I C K, at Gmail. Um, now, tomorrow. I, I, I Sorry, before we move away from ghosts, um, okay. I just had someone pop in with a great pun that today we were talking about stegosauruses. Oh, that's good. Stegosaurus. I like that. I like that. That's good. I'm going to write that down. I never thought about that. Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our time together is almost done uh, tomorrow. We're going to talk about another really well-armored dino, but that's a lot smaller 
He's got a real thick head. I'm talking like nine inches of bone. That is right. We're talking about the Pachycephalosaurus. Jade is excited. The big crazy dome head guys. Yep. Maybe head butters, maybe not. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Those are the Pachycephalosaurus. Tomorrow, that's what we're doing. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel. My friends on Instagram, you guys, hit us up in Zoom. The room gets full pretty quickly, but I want you here so I can see your faces and answer your questions. Uh, I don't care if you're zooming a grave to try to find a dinosaur ghost or simply asking questions. Never stop digging. <laughs> Quack, 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 quack,